Okay, hello, everybody. This is Claude Diamond and uh, Claude Diamond under the influence. I just had some um, uh, surgery yesterday in the collarbone. Very painful, by the way. But I wanted to talk today. Hi, Jessica. I wanted to talk today about persuasion. Um, how do you influence other people? How do you get other people to say yes? How do you make a hell of a lot more money? Do you read a script? Do you just do that numbers game that everybody else is doing? Why do some people, you got to ask yourself this question, why do some people make so much more money than other people? Why do some people uh, are always the leaders? Why, do, why are they happier? Why are they more confident? Why do some people make so much more money? Hi, Jude. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. Hi, Tim. You can turn on your video. Good morning. <laughs> we like, I, I, like, I like participation. This might be a short one because I am under the influence. Uh, I, <laughs> um, I had a collarbone surgery, so I'm, I'm, I'm chock full of good old Oxycontin and a couple other wonderful pain-killing drugs uh, right now. But um, I was going to talk, today was role play, and I wanted to specifically uh, just talk about what are the techniques that other people you why are some people so successful, Tim? How come how do you become a one percenter? Do you ever meet people in every company? There's always one or two or three people. They seem to sell more, they seem to get more contracts, they seem to make a lot more money. What are they doing differently from everyone Charisma. else? Charisma. 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 Charisma is on my list, believe it or not. I have uh a little list here. I'll show you. I'm sorry. I'm one-handed. My other arm. My other arm's in a sling here. Every. Thank goodness I broke my left collarbone, side collarbone, because I got my right. I'm right-handed, and you can see here. I do have charisma, likability, rapport. How much easier is life when you get people to like you? Much easier. Oh Better. yeah. Yeah. I just quick story. Um. Uh, I was the other, I, I went skiing, I got hurt. Uh, we have a local hospital nearby. Uh, they treated me wonderful. The nurses, the doctor, they scheduled me right away for surgery. Very painful, by the way. Don't ever break a collarbone. R break anything, but not a collarbone. And uh, they were so nice and uh, got, uh, Claudia went to uh, went and got a whole bunch of cake and cookies and brought it over to them for all the nurses and, and everybody in the hospital. And you got, you know, do you think they'll remember us? They'll remember me. Do you think do you think it's important to acknowledge people? I have a feeling they'll remember you, Claude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think no, it is. No important. doubt. <laughs> if Nobody we're, forgets we're, the Claude. <laughs> yeah. And, and in any business we're in, real estate, life insurance, any business we're in, if we just go to the prospect and we give the same old a uh, boilerplate presentation. We give the same old, we ask the same old boring questions and everything. Do we, do you think we create that where they, uh, the prospect, um, it gets emotionally involved and says, yes, let's do this. Let's buy this. Here's my check here. Where do I sign? Let's, um, you know, how do you, how do you get people? How important is it to get past all the facts and figures and just get someone to like you? Real quick. How do we do that? How do we do that? My mentor was fantastic in this. I never saw anyone sell and close people in one phone call. You guys know I'm all about qualifying and closing in, in one phone call or getting out. There's nothing there. You can't, you know, um, you want to get my blood pressure up, say something to me like it's a numbers game. Like you just go out there and you knock on doors and you make hundreds of phone calls and you read the same tired script and sooner or later you find one poor soul who's going to buy your used dental floss, you know, and I can't sell that way. I refuse to sell that way. But isn't that what they're teaching out there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How do we, how do we, less is more. How do we get a, a few people? Good morning, Alex. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for joining us. This might uh, be this might be yeah. a short one today. Okay. Yeah, I'm glad you hear your surgery went well. Because I'm under the influence. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm I've got happy pills in me. I want to hear about <laughs> the quadruple flip you were trying to do when you 
when you wreck your collarbone. Oh, I, I do 360s. I've been always, I've always been a, a, a trick skier, a ballet skier, a freestyle skier. Huh. And um, I, I do it all the time. I ski. You, you'll always find me on the slope. I'm the guy skiing down backwards. Or I'm, <laughs> I'm spinning while I'm doing it, or I'm kicking up one foot, and or I'm go off a mogul and I'll do a quick flip or some. I always do that stuff. And um, uh, fortunately, I caught an edge on a on a on a helicopter uh, where you what? go up. Yeah, uh, you go. It's called a helicopter. You go off a oh. mogul and you spin like a helicopter rollerblade. Oh. And um, and I caught an edge and I, boom! I just slapped down. Right on the right on this little puppy here. Sorry okay. for the. <laughs> oh, it's okay. not a, it's not a fun. But let's stick on, uh, on the topic here. Um, there are tech. Oh, before I do anything, everybody write this down. Um, a friend of mine called me up. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Robert Cialdini. He wrote the um, Psychology of Persuasion. He's a psychologist, uh, University of. Arizona or something like that. Anyway, he was interviewed in a pod, in a podcast, um, and that podcast is called. I mean, it's hard to do things with one hand. <laughs> um, it's called Hidden Brain. Everybody, I'm telling you, this is one of the best podcast interviews ever um, on persuasion techniques, and it's two parts, and. You, I'll tell you what. This is better than going. Then uh, this is better than some overpriced guru course, and it's free. And it's free. Um, and they talk about examples of persuasion techniques and why we need to become persuaders. Uh, here, I'll just read. I'll read you the first paragraph here. Um, it says we all exert pressure on each other in ways small and profound. We recommend movies or books to a friend. We convince a colleague. To take a different tactic at work. We lobby a neighbor to vote for our favorite political candidate. Uh, this week, we launched the first of a two-part mini-series on the science of influence and talked with psycho uh, psychologist Robert Cialdini and how we can all improve our technique for persuading others. And this is two parts. It's called The Hidden Brain. Make sure make sure you, 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 you see it. Uh, you listen to it. It's great. Listen to it while you're exercising or driving in the car. To me, this is the missing link for success, for making money. You can, I've met people so much smarter than me in uh, real estate, oh. in finance, in marketing. And, um, and, then, uh, and then, you know, uh, I know people who spend a fortune. I, did you have something bad for lunch or is that a dog growling, Tim? That's my dog. I'm trying to mute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you had ate something that upset your stomach or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when we get hold of prospects, real estate, buying, selling, investing, insurance, anything, car sales, what? Why? How come some people can just um, persuade and influence people right away? I mean, so quickly. You know, they have that magic touch, that that million dollar skill. And and part of it is they're using guts. They're using guts. And guts is a combination of acting skill. Not to be, you know, persuasion can be negative or positive. We know a lot of politicians, uh, they they have used uh, uh you know, historically, they have mm -hmm. used uh persuasion techniques to control masses of people, right? They know just the right words to say the right, uh, uh, right at the right time. But in business, how important is it? And I think most of us are uh, what I call kitchen table millionaires. How many of us can talk to a person for the first time and get that likability, that trust, that charisma, where that person just says, you know, you're right. Let's do this. I want to, you know, I feel good about you. Um, you, you make. You made that connection with that person really quick. How do you do that? Listen to them. Trust. You, you begin to have them trust you. Yeah. How do you positively manipulate somebody? You got to ask questions, right? 
I always go back to the doctor technique. Where does it hurt? Why are we talking today? What's the problem? Mm-hmm. And you get to, and somebody, Rick, was that you? I think you said you listened to them. Yes, sir. Say, yeah. You get I, the way you listen is you ask questions and you derive and, and you ask questions with a lot of what we call stroking, sincere mm-hmm. compliments. Mm-hmm. And you get the information from them. You set your rules and the agenda. You get your qualification. What's their need? How strong is their need? Can you make it stronger on a one through 10 scale? Do they have the money to pay for that need? If they don't have the money, if they don't have the money or they can't make a decision right away, what's your next move with that prospect? Keep talking and give that presentation over and over again. What do you do? Put it on the back burner. (laughs) Yeah. You say bye-bye. It's over. Can we sell everybody? No. No. So we want to work smarter. We want to get the prospect to turn into the salesperson while we're getting them to like and trust us at the same time. Okay. Cialdini talks a lot about using scarcity. Do we see examples of scarcity sometimes mm-hmm. when, we're, when we're going to buy things? You know? Yeah. Only hey, one left. There's only, hey, Randy, I, I know you want this carpeting and I'm not trying to press you, but we only have, I only have one roll of this carpeting left in the color you want. Um, are you, you know, is this something you want to do now or do you want to wait another three to six months? Oh, man. I got, I got it. I got to get it done because if I don't get it now, can I match the color later? Uh, no, uh, this this is the color you want, and um, I know you're shopping around and looking for the best price. But I only have one roll of this stuff, and I have a crew right now. We can install this by Thursday for you. You can get it done by Thursday. Yeah, that's what I okay. Said. Let's let's do it. You're a good man. Thank you for your trust. Boom. Scarcity. There's only one left. We don't have much, you know, and that's and, and that can be now. If you get caught lying, you get the opposite effect. What happens? Mm. Yeah, never do business yeah. with you. Yeah, you lose credibility. You lose trust. You're when you make the prospect feel like you're manipulating them. Has anyone met that bad salesperson yet? Yeah, the price goes up on Friday. Like they say that all the time. What happened? What happens? To, what's what goes on in the mind of the prospect right away? Yeah, I've heard this before. Yeah, I heard this guy. This guy just wants his hand on my wallet. He'll say whatever he needs to say to to get to take my money right now. I back off. Do we back off from those people? I do. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll walk away. Because when you lose that trust and credibility, it's gone. Absolutely. What and so um, then? There's other things: social proof. There's reciprocity. There's authority. There's trust, consistency, and unity. There's all these different techniques to persuade somebody to get a resolution, to get a sale, right now. So when we ask questions, if I ask somebody a question, gee, uh, Alex. Um, yeah, we're talking about getting you into the, uh, you're calling me about my lease purchase house right now. Um, are, are you renting right now? Or, uh, what's your, if you don't mind me asking, why are you interested in a rent own house? Oh, Wait. um, I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm renting and I'm just kind of browsing around. Oh, okay. Why don't you just, how long have you been renting? Uh, about, about a year. About a year. What kind of rent are you paying? Uh, about 1500 it's a reasonable rent, fifteen hundred times twelve. What is that? Eighteen thousand mm. uh, dollars, give or take. No, fifteen hundred yeah. times twelve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thousand yeah, yeah, dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, I'm old school. Math, math is yeah. not. Uh, math is not woke. It's what if math two plus two is yeah. still four in my world. Yeah. <laughs> oh, three point eight. Well, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Oh God, you're oh God, <laughs> you're in, you're encroaching on my. Micro environment. <laughs> uh, the thing about it is, um, why? Well, well you're, it's a reasonable rent, Alex. Why don't you just stay there? Oh. Stay there. I mean, eighteen thousand a year to your landlord. That's that. That's a good financial decision, right? Um, I mean, it, it's um, it's easier, but uh, I'm also like, um, I, I like to like build some equity and. Uh, 
yeah uh, and maybe like maybe like have a place i could like run out if i like ever move out oh okay so so you, when you say equity you mean build up capital uh, over a long period of time so you have money for retirement or other things someday um, yeah uh, just or like or whatever i decide to um you know to like you know invest in later Oh, okay. This isn't anything you want to do now. You want to do this in five or six years. You wouldn't want, uh, if you found the right property that you could move into now and enjoy and rent out, Airbnb it, build up equity, get tax benefits. That's not a decision you can make today though, right? I mean, you know, it depends on what it is. It's a, it's a three bedroom, two and a half bath house set up as a three year rent to own. So you could move in, enjoy it just like you own it. And then within the next three years, can you qualify to buy it? Is that what you're looking for? Uh, remind me what rent to own is again. What do you think? It, take a guess, sir. You're a smart young man. What is uh, rent? Are you renting your apart? Are you renting your apartment? Uh, I am. Okay, so you know what rent means, right? Temporary possession. Right. Okay. Oh, to own means that you can buy it someday. You know what that means, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you can rent it and buy it someday for preset terms. And we, and it, it, I got a feeling you're not comfortable with this discussion, sir. Should I leave? Uh, no, Maybe, I, 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 listen, when, when you're ready to do, when you're ready to do business, because we need $15,000 down and I've got four of the people who've called me about this property so maybe you're just not ready for a move like this it's a big move no it's, it's it sounds interesting um so you said it's fifteen thousand. yeah fifteen thousand down and 2300 a month and you can move into a house today that you can buy in the next 36 months that price is locked in at 350. okay okay is what? A... so I'm uh, sorry, sir. I, I really got to go. These other people, these people are calling me like crazy. I've got to show this house. It's going to be gone today. So if, I, I get the feeling you're not ready to make this big a move. So maybe I should leave. Um, yeah, no. Uh, and that this is like for the example of like someone, uh, I'm just trying to be like, like difficult. So I'm yeah. And I can be just as difficult because yeah. who, who comes first in the Claude world? Salesman. Yeah me and you're doing a great job alex okay and i these kind of phone calls well what does rent to own me what is this 21 yeah. questions okay on a one through ten what was and ten means he's emotionally involved and he's a highly motivated prospect what number would you give alex he played it very well about a four i was going to say a two or a three mm -hmm. i in the in the first gee where's my little in my first 90 seconds, he, he was just playing. He was just playing like a very difficult uh, type of tenant buyer. Million questions. You notice how he answered the questions. He never could say yes or no. He always obfuscated, right? Mm -hmm. Always talked around. Am I going to close this guy today? No. No. So how much time should I waste? None. How much pressure should I put on him using... Social proof. I have all these other people. Why do all these other people so interested in this property? Okay, I couldn't get a rise out of them on that. Okay, how about scarcity? It's the only rent to own available in the marketplace. How about um, just, um, it's it makes sense. He's wasting all this money, 18,000 a year on his rental. And I still couldn't get him over a two or a three. What does that tell you? He's not ready. Yeah, he's not ready. And what happens to us? Alex, you did too good a job. You did a great job there. Okay. What happens to us when we spend 30, 40, 60 minutes they, and we get the I'll think about it and everything? What happens to us? I get frustrated. How about you guys? Yeah, yep. so, I mean, like, yeah I think it's a, like I, these are like like similar questions I get when, uh, you know, when I, when I, I jump on calls. It's just, you know, just trying like trying to like avoid getting like uh, like like taking like the presentation, like pitfall, um, just when you're being asked question after question after question, which, you know, I mean, for, for good reason, but. Sure. And, yeah. you know, and you'll get those 21 questions and who's in control when they're asking all the questions. Are you in control? Oh, yeah. The person ask, asking the questions. 
the person asking the questions, what's the traditional salesperson do when he finally gets a prospect on the phone? It's been a long, uh, cruel, lean, mean winter, and he finally got a prospect, and this prospect is cross-examining him. What's the amateur? What's 99% of all salespeople going to do? Work for free. Yeah. Free consultation. And then the and then the prospect will say, "Well, this is great. Send me information. I'll think about it. If I have the time, I'll drop by. Give me a call in a week." How much money did you make? Zero. Zero. Why are we in business, lady and gentlemen? Make money today. Can I have an amen, please? Amen. Make money today, and you make money today by showing leadership, by being. A, here's a word. I don't. I think a lot of people hate this word: assertiveness. Is assertiveness mm -hmm. a bad thing when you're showing the prospect it's in their best interest? No. 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 You know, and you got to use, and then you use that technique. I always talk about the reverse psychology. Well, sir, it's a reasonable rent. You like the place. Stay in there another five, 10 years. And that, you, you know, maybe you're just not ready to own something, right? You don't see the advantages to it. Why are we even talking today, sir? I don't understand. Help me out. OK, then you got to find out they might be asking you all these questions. And when should you talk about money? Now. Now, is that what you said? At the yeah. beginning. Now. That's kind of rude, though, Tim, talking about money up front. Isn't that rude? I used to think that, but not anymore. Oh, really? How do you bring up money? Come on, qualify me for money up front. Um, as a renter, I want to, like, whatever you want, use cars, use dental floss, any qualify me for money. We've had this discussion. We're doing the 21 questions. We've been involved for three, four minutes already. And you know, you need, uh, $10,000 down for whatever you're doing. So Claude, we're going to need $10,000 down and $2,300 a month. Is That's not something you can pull the trigger on, is it? Okay, that's good. How about you make it a little more charismatic? <laughs> can we do a little more? Fin Who can do it? Do it with a little, a little bit more finesse. Hey Tim, you know what? You told me you're looking to get into a new house. You're tired of living in your mother's uh, mother-in-law's attic with the five Chihuahuas and your girlfriend. And this is an opportunity to get into a house. And I think on a one through ten, you're about a seven or an eight, right? Yeah. Oh, good, good. And um, I'm sorry I'm talking so fast. So many people are interested in this property. I want to, I think it's going to move today. Do you mind if we talk about money up front? Sure. Yeah. Okay. This is a $350,000 house. You need 15,000 option money to move in and it's 2,300 a month rent. Is that, is 2,300 a month comfortable for your budget right now? It's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. I know. Yeah. Which means? No, I mean, yes, it's comfortable. Oh, for you, you can afford that then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what about the $15,000 down, which will go to the purchase price on this property, and you can buy it anytime you want in the next uh, 24 months? The 15000 might be a little difficult to come up with right now, but... Uh, then maybe it's over. Maybe you got to stay in mom's attic for a few more years. Damn. Yeah. What should we do? What should we do next, Tim? Is it over? I mean, if you don't have the fifteen, fifteen thousand dollars down on a three fifty house that you can call your own, buy it'll appreciate tax benefits and everything. But you can't do the if you can't do it, you can't do it, right? Are we done? I just couldn't pull the trigger on it. I, I understand. Business. I'm not trying to embarrass you. It's a lot of money and everything. So maybe next time we can do that, right? Yeah, I really, maybe. I really have to. I really have to go because I've got all these other calls. Let me. Mm. Okay. Off the role play. What should I do next? Who knows my next, who knows the next guts move, Rick? What's the next guts move when they don't have the money, but they have some money. What can how you much, do next? What, what, what can, that's what I would ask him. How much can you, can, how much can you do it? And then if you, you can't do go the ahead, full 15. Play. It's role play Wednesday. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. You okay. All right, Tim, if you can't do the 15, what can you do? And maybe we can work out something with a note that you pay the other part of it on the back end of part of the purchase. And that way you're still building equity. Does that sound like something you'd be interested in? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I'm interested in the house. I just don't have the 15 grand uh, that I can pull the trigger on right now. But what do you have? I could do uh, eight. Okay. So if we set up a secondary note for the eight up front, and then we'll take the other seven, and we'll do it as a secondary to the mortgage. And that way you can sit there and pay the seven up over time, just like you would do on a, like a credit card. Or, or savings account and that way you're building up your down payment is that something you could do yeah say about 250 a month so 25 50 a month total yeah i could do that all right so okay. i've got a contract sitting right here um that i'm putting the terms down do you mind uh if i send this over we can both look at it and that way all you got to do is click on the docusign and we can get this done today yeah we can do that Thank you. Boom. Here, let me send that to you. That was great. So, yeah, thank you. That was good. <laughs> that was great. So, did you see how assertive Rick was? Was Rick was Rick a beautifully pushy gut salesman that I love? Yeah, was it, it didn't feel pushy. Was Rick a little? Was Rick? Uh, was Rick making anybody uncomfortable because he was so pushy? Hey, this is what we can do, and we can do it today. I can send you the contract. We can do it today. Is there anything wrong with that? No. No. Nothing's wrong. Nothing was wrong with that. Rick got paid, and Rick got a contract today, and he got paid today. Is there anything wrong with making $8,000 on a Wednesday morning? No. Nope. Absolutely not. And the secondary note. For the remainder, uh, seven thousand. Let's say he got a secondary note for seven thousand for the remainder. Could he? Could he just keep that as passive income, a check every month or whatever? Could what else could you do with that note? Let's digress here a little bit. You have a note for seven thousand dollars. You're getting mm -hmm. five hundred dollars a month, and you're working on another deal, and money's running a little tight. Could you? Could you use that note? Sell it. You could sell it and discount it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody uh somebody sell a note. Somebody sell somebody sell me a seven thousand dollar note. Because you need cash. So uh Claude, I have here a um a note here. The the principal balance owed on it is seven thousand dollars as of today. Okay. Um, it's collecting three hundred dollars a month for the next three years. 36 months that yeah like nine nine thousand dollars over the course of the next three years oh it's got interest yeah this yeah oh it's interest bearing note okay is it seasoned? is it seasoned it is seasoned um but it's simple interest no but uh, when i say seasoned has the person been paying on it for a couple of months uh six months okay six months okay that's seasoned and is it secured by anything it is only secured by their um, desire to purchase the the lease option property that they're in. Okay, that was the best bullshit answer I've heard all day. Thank you. That was a good. <laughs> that was a very good answer. That was very good. <laughs> I love the way you said that. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so um, uh, so it's uh, I can uh, so it's a nine thousand dollar note if it's fully paid off. Yeah. It's a seven thousand dollar note, but it. But it yields nine thousand. Is that is yes. what you're saying? At okay. three hundred a month. And what would you like? For, what do you want from me today? Because I'm real busy. Uh, Fifty five hundred. Fifty five hundred. That's that's only a fifteen hundred dollar discount. That's about forty five percent actually off the nine thousand. Yeah, but if that's the yield. The actual note is only seven thousand. Okay. I'm just moving the no, I, moving the things around here. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. On it. Yeah. Um, um, well, uh, you're gonna have. Yeah, well, if you if you want to do business with me, you're gonna have to do a lot better than that. Well, what what is better? Um, I'll give you fifty cents on the dollar. I'll give you thirty five hundred. If we could do it today, I can do it for uh, seventy cents on the dollar. No. Mm -mm. Okay, I think we're done here. I, okay, are you sure? Because oh, I mean, what, what do you? Boom. Now this comes back to what? How badly does Tim need the money? Right. The, how do you read a prospect that urgency? 
Gee, Tim, why you could use a little reverse psychology. Gee, Tim, why are you selling this note? It's a good note. You're getting money every month. Let the let the note pay off and get the whole nine thousand. You sure you want to sell it? I mean, why don't you just keep it? Mm -hmm. Oh, because I need uh, I have a deal going and I need seven thousand dollars as um as money. I have two grand um to my name right now, and I, oh. I need to. You don't have to do that deal today, though, right? I mean, I, you got to act quick. Yeah. Oh, well, quick. Okay. Off the role play. How important is it for me to get that information? Oh, Very. man. You just got the keys to the kingdom. I just got. Now I know he needs the money bad. Mm -hmm. right. Real bad. So, one of my favorite questions is that he, the first offer he made to me was, I think, 4,500. I think you made, you said, Tim. I think, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. 4,500. And the, my, my next reply is always, is that the best you can do? What happens so many times? Rick, I think that's one of your favorite lines, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's is that the best you can do? And hopefully you're going to come down, mm -hmm. unless you draw a line in the sand. What does that tell me? If you draw, I once had a deal where the per I had a contract for the property for three eighty. The owner desperately needed money because he was building a spec home, desperately needed money. And he came to me a few months later and he said, um, if you if you if you pay off the contract, I'll discount it. And I I thought it was going to be like 10, 15,000 at the most. And he said, I'll drop it down to three hundred thousand from three eighty to three hundred eighty thousand dollars in one breath. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the lesson learned there? You didn't ask him, is that the work he could do? Is that the lesson? Well, lesson, mm -hmm. yeah. Gee, it's what? Not, yeah, I mean, you could have probably gotten more, but, and I'd say probably by the way he dropped it that fast, yeah. he probably left 30000 on the table. Yeah, there's a, there's a line where, well, to me, if I got it for from 380 to 360, I was thinking something like that. I would have been delighted. Okay. What's that? What's that wonderful rule? The first to mention price always loses. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get the other person to volunteer the numbers. What happens if it goes back and forth though too often? Well, what's the best price you can, uh, you can give me? Well, what's the best offer you can give me? What happens if that, if you get into that, that scenario? Somebody's got to make a decision at that point. You get somebody's got to make a decision because it can get it can get abrasive then. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll is I'll phrase it as, let me make Claude, let me make you a ridiculous offer. Yeah. Okay. Promise you want you. you're 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 trying to sell this car for eighty thousand because it's a Mercedes SL five hundred X. Um. But let me make you a ridiculous offer. How about thirty five thousand? Wow, that is a ridiculous offer. I you gave me permission to make it so. Yeah, I made got, one just to start us. Yes, permission. So, or you or you basically say, um, Rick, can I make you an offer? And would you promise you wouldn't you won't get mad at me? Sure. Okay. Make me an offer, please. Okay. okay. Just don't get mad at me. I, I love the car. It's eighty worth eighty thousand easy. Um, and it's free and clear. Uh, would you take thirty five thousand? My best offer. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that, but I'll tell you what I can do. I knew you'd get mad at me, Rick. I knew no, no, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. But uh, let's talk this out a little bit more because uh, we're the Cafe Cito is actually cooking over here, and we haven't enjoyed our Cafe Cito together. How about fifty thousand instead? Wow. You want fifty? I want thirty-five. Um, anybody ever read that book by Mister Voss? Never split the difference. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I always, I always split the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I go under what I really want to pay, and then I come up a little, and I seem like a reasonable fellow. Okay, yep. so I want thirty-five. You want fifty? Um, what? What is that? What is that? Um, 40... a fifteen. A fifteen thousand difference. Yeah. So seven thousand more. So forty. Yeah, forty-two thousand from thirty-five plus seven would be forty-two, something like that. Whatever. Mm. The bottom line is. Um, you know, the, what is really the art of negotiation, giving up something to get something to get what you really want. But when mm -hmm. you give up, well, when you give up something, give up, try to impress upon the prospect 
that you're giving up something real important that isn't to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, what? You know, you st- that's the struggle mm-hmm. part of negotiation. Always struggle. Oh, no one's ever asked me that before, Rick. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're really, you, boy, you're really beating me up here, man. How about we just meet in the middle here and we can do we can do a deal right now. And this is where, depending on where I'm at, as far as expenses, et cetera, non-role play here, um, will depend on what I do next. Yeah. But if it's if it's within reason for what I'm looking for, because I was way up here, and now he's brought it into my range, you know, do I really go go for the jugular here? Because that's short term, and I want long term relationship with him later, because uh-huh. he's bringing me money. Okay, that, that, that's this is where I go back to the role play. Yeah, you well, know. Let's see, forty two. Claude, I'll tell you what. Yeah, Rick, we've known each other. We've been neighbors and friends, and our our kids went to school together. Man, we've known each other for twenty years here. Tell you what, how about we go ahead and do that, and uh, let's see how we how we do on the next uh, deal as well. How's that? Okay. And uh, by the way, here comes the coffee, Cito. <laughs> <laughs> and the next deal never comes, does it? Sometimes it does. And I've, I've actually had people call okay. me back. Okay. And sometimes I get two or three deals, not just the one. Okay. That's good. How about a little reciprocity here? Can you use reciprocity? That is a pure persuasion technique. When you give up something and then you ask for something back in return. You, what you really want. Alex, I'll tell you what, Alex, I'll, t- uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the price. Okay. I'll finance. I'll, I'll give you the price you want. I'll finance the 15,000. Could you do me one small favor? If I do all these things for you today? Sure. What is it? Could you, I'm going to send you the agreement. I'll have it to you in a half hour. Could you sign it and get it back to me with the wire transfer information uh, before two o'clock today? Would you do me that small favor? I don't know. How am I going to have time to do my due diligence? I don't know. But you, you, we've been negotiated the price you wanted. Okay, You've, uh, you did your research. You looked online. You can still do your due diligence after the fact if you like. But bottom line. This is this is the um, this is the part where you have to make a decision, or you can say no to me. You pick. Okay. Okay. What? Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'll sign it. What? I said, um, like, yeah, I, I said, like, just yeah, send it to me, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll take care of it. Okay, take care of it means you'll have it before two thirty. Uh, before two thirty. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. What about the wire transfer? Uh, what about it? Um, you were going to transfer it to my Wells Fargo account, the fifteen thousand today, or send me the uh, tra- uh, send me the tracing uh, information, right? Uh, does it have to be today? Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, and it's uh, it's non it's non refundable. It's what? It's non-refundable. That's right. Yes. We're making a commitment here. And I'll guarantee good title and I'll guarantee the excellent condition of the house. I will give you those guarantees in writing. Okay. What what, what does that guarantee mean? Well, like, like what I just what I just Yeah, said. I mean like yeah, like um like how much how do I um how am I supposed to verify that if I if I don't have time to show this in front of like like a legal like a like attorney or whatever? Call up your, uh, you can call up, uh, you can call up an escrow or title company, have them double check the title. You can do that on your own. You can also, uh, if you want to send your contractor over the house, I'll let them have admittance to the property. I will guarantee good title to the property and I will guarantee the good condition of the property. Okay. Um, I get the feeling you're uncomfortable doing business with me. Should we call it a day? Because we've been on the phone about 45 minutes and and now you're bringing up new problems and things. So I don't want you to do something you're not comfortable with. I have plenty of other people to talk to. Okay. You came yeah, to me. I, you said you wanted your own place. You said you like the terms. You like the location and everything. But it's still okay to say no. Just say it right now before we go and do all this work. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's something I want to do. 
Okay. Have a nice day. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to like role play the the, I, the difficult things I, I hear. So yeah, now, that's a real conversation, by the way, because what happens when you hear the guy who's doing the maybes, the probablys, and he starts bringing up all these last minute problems? What's going to happen with that guy tomorrow? There's going to be more last minute problems. It's, it go more problems, or he's going to get out of the deal. Who? How important is it for you to be the authority figure for you to fire the prospect? And push them. Sometimes they come back, they'll call back, Claude, you know, I was thinking about it and everything. What happens when you take something away from somebody and you act like you don't need them? And like everybody else is interested in the property. Okay. You got that social proof thing going. Okay. Got all those other people calling and wanting to see the property. What happens when you take it away to somebody emotionally? They want it more. They get upset. They want it. You want it more, but just but do salespeople act this way? Not usually. No, not often enough. Not often enough. You're right. Exactly. It's so important to play the to play this to protect yourself. I mean, you're doing business honestly and ethically. How many games do we have to play with the I'll think about it? And, 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 oh, I got this new problem. And how do I know I can trust you? And what's the guarantee? And, and all these other things. You got to fix them in the first phone call. Ab absolutely. How do we, let's do, uh, anybody else have questions or role plays they want to do here? I'll let you guys decide. What's your toughest situation? It's role play Wednesday and I'm under the influence. So take advantage of me. <laughs> My tip is um, I got the I'll stitches go to prove it here. <laughs> We're, we still haven't been doing a lot of um, outbound marketing or inbound marketing. Um, we're just you... getting, I mean, we're just getting rolling on doing actual marketing for homeowners to call us we are still doing a lot of outbound cold calling and things like that. So my toughest um, thing is just the calling, um, you know, when somebody calls and, or when, I'm sorry, when I call somebody and they are not necessarily even trying to sell their house, like we're, we're just calling on a, a tax default or um, uh, somebody who's in foreclosure. Okay. Is that working? No. Well, it works, but but it's not I working. Mean, it it may work, but is it working for you? No, we we need we want to uh, have is more it, people calling us. Right, because those cold calls, those icy cold calls, they're behind in payments, they're in pre foreclosure and everything. Mathematically, are you the first phone call? Usually, no. Nope. Nope. Okay, that makes it hard, right? Because They've had the letters, the postcards, the telemarketers, yeah. and, and then you call. So you better right, sound right. so you better sound uniquely different if you're going to get into a conversation with them. But mathematically, is, is what's the likelihood of converting that person? It's uh, it's back in the numbers game conversation it's that you back made. in the numbers game. So in in when so we want to attract who's your perfect customer? Who's your perfect prospect? Let's reverse engineer it here. Perfect prospect is a homeowner that is has a challenge, uh, you know, divorce or or tax tax default foreclosure okay. something like that. Um, property needs a little bit of work, but not necessarily falling down. Um, and who understands that? Who already understands that their only option is to sell, or their best option is to sell. Okay. Not um, still trying to do loan modifications and save their home. Okay. And what? So what do they really want? They want to get out of this problem. They're looking yeah. for a resolution. They're looking for cash. They want to. They or they're looking to get out from under the debt. Yep. Liability or whatever, right? Yeah. So what do you? Where do you think they go on on terms of research? Like Alex, uh, due diligence. Where what are they reading? What what kind of social media do you think they're do you think they're going into YouTube? How to get out of my home fast? How to sell my home fast? What do you do when you're behind in five payments? Do you think they're doing research in those particular areas? Sometimes they are. Yeah. Are yeah. they fine? So 
I mean, what Google. would let's, go ahead? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Google searching for sure. They're Google searching. I love YouTube. I'm on YouTube every day. I think it's the most number one or two after Facebook, probably. Okay. And can you anticipate the topics that your perfect prospect is looking for? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Can you put content out there that so they watch this and then you offer them a call to action or an incentive to develop? We're, we want to get into that conversation with that prospect, with that problem. How do we make that connection? How do we get them to come to us? Because did you ever go on the internet and you got interested in a product or service and you researched it, you read everything you could, you you wanted to call the company and talk to somebody right away? Did you ever get that excited about something and mm -hmm. you and you wanted to tell? Yeah. That's what we're trying to create. Okay, um, you know. So if you did an article, five ways to get out of your house during a nasty divorce. Um, how to sell your home in the next seventy-two hours. The, uh, the least purchase solution to a distressed property or a high maintenance property. And you put out content, videos, podcasts, um, the blogs, uh, Instagram pictures, um, YouTube shorts, TikTok shorts, 30 to 60 seconds. Hey, this is the problem I had. Um, I, I got a property, but my company wanted to transfer me to Guam and I had to sell this property fast and I didn't want to deal with uh, tenants and toilets. This is the solution I had. Boom, boom, boom. And I have a paper on it. I have a mind map on it. I can uh, call me and I'll, and I'll send it to you right away. They call you up. Is that the perfect prospect situation? Yeah. That's what much. I, yeah, that's what I do. It, it it I invest 30 to 60 minutes a day on con on attraction content. Cause when how good a feeling is it when a prospect calls you? Isn't that the mountaintop? Oh, it's mm -hmm. way better. Isn't it the best? Yeah. Hi, uh, ring ring. Say hello, Tim. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Tim. I just saw your video, man. Oh, that was uh, I was one. Uh, I love that. My name's Claude Diamond and uh I wanted to get that free mind map you ordered about uh, uh, how to sell my, uh, how to get out of my home fast. Oh, that's great. We can send that over to you right now. What's what, what do you have going on? Um, yeah, well, I got a situation where I just got a job offer and I have to leave Austin and move to uh, East Bumble, Florida. East Bumble, Florida. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that's, that's, that's cool. I'm glad, glad you got a new job. Um, what was I? What was I going with it? Uh, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions here, and then um, maybe I can make you an offer on your house today? Oh, you do that? Yeah, we buy properties all the time. Oh, okay. Boom. Now you're in a dialogue with me. Is that the best? Is that where you make money? In that sit, that little situation where you get into that conversation, where you got a good prospect, a qualified prospect, you know they got a problem, and you're developing that rapport that. That charisma, that charismatic relationship. And now you're finding out, and he's going to get off the phone and say, Hey, honey, I just talked with Tim, and this guy has some great ideas, and maybe we can do a deal with him. Boom. Isn't that the perfect, isn't that the scenario you'd love to be in every day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And and that's and see, I'd rather do, I'd rather do that kind of attraction marketing then do the numbers game marketing. Nothing wrong with numbers game marketing. Some people do it very successfully. I just I just know that I don't have the patience and the time to go through that repetitive uh, type of marketing to find that one needle in those 10 haystacks. Yeah. In a competitive world. Jessica, was that your new baby? Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, I didn't acknowledge you there. I saw you with the baby there. That's okay. No, he came in for a quick wave. Yeah, that's little yeah. Alexander. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. We call that an immaculate conception, an adoption, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. My yeah. wife and I, we're adoptive parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a blessing. Yeah, we, so yeah, we even, uh, we we rent, we got a rent to own four-year-old from the Soviet <laughs> in Southern California. That's a good idea. Maybe yeah. skip the infant. That's it's a lot of sleepless nights. <laughs> yeah. We, we got our kid, seriously, we got him from social services in Southern California. 
Wow. Um, the foster program. I, <laughs> my, my friends were all spending uh, fifty thousand dollars to adopt uh, uh, babies in other countries and stuff. Wow. And so I always go to my thirty-two-year-old son and say, "You still owe me two fifty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the time, but uh, say so <laughs> I think we digressed, but yeah. it sounds like it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Attraction marketing is about putting out content. Now, here's the best part. Um, yesterday, word of honor, Claudia came to me yesterday and she said, hey, um, I was just checking the bank account. Uh, um, uh, Google just sent us money. I said, oh, I didn't. Every month they send us money from my marketing because I get paid for the clicks. So not only do you get leads, you get paid. If you start getting some momentum, you actually get paid for those leads. How about that? Is that a perfect world? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's 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 a nice check. It pays the Verizon bill or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so not only do I get quality leads, but also those leads mm -hmm. help attract more people to my web page, who leave their email information, and that builds up my opt-in database. How many people here are working on a quality database? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you have a nice little spreadsheet of people and say you found a property, owner finance, or you want to move a piece of land with or something like that, can you email all those people pictures and links to Zillow or do a video tour? Can you, can you send it? What's the odds of people who know who you are, who have contacted you previously, they're in your database, and you send them once a month properties that you have for sale or notes for sale? Or whatever you're selling. Yeah. Yeah. That's my kind of marketing. Did that help you, Tim? Oh, yeah, definitely. Thank I you. do other things too, public speaking. Everybody here familiar with meetup.com? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meetup.com is wonderful. It's all the real estate clubs and groups that meet in your geographic area. Great place to meet people, to network, to build up your database. Great place. Podcast interviews. All these podcasts, they're always looking for people to interview. Guess what happens when you, you go on a podcast interview, they ask you 20 questions, and you get to do, you get to take advantage if they're if they have a good following. Say this is a podcast and they have 5,000 followers. Nice small little podcast. Okay. And you do a nice little interview and you offer an incentive, a call to action at the beginning, middle, or during. Uh, the end of that podcast. Do you start, can you absorb that other person's following? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's 5,000 people. Okay. Public speaking. When I do public speaking, I never sell anything. I, I give stuff away for free. And the next morning I have all these emails and texts with names and phone numbers and emails. That's attraction marketing. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're, you know, if you got, if you have this little, this little device and you can put out and create content and the way to do that is just um, make a list, five top, take five topics that you think will, or, or 10 that will relate to your perfect prospect. Okay. What is your perfect prospect? What do you, what are they Googling? What are they looking for? You know, three secrets of how to. How to close on a, uh, how to make a proper, how to do an Airbnb. Uh, five things you should always ask your attorney before doing a real estate deal. Um, my, my three favorite uh, uh, creative real estate strategies in a, in a recession, in a in recessionary market. What happens when you put out all that content, when you put out stuff like that? I go to, when I see things like that, I go to people's web pages. Gee, I want to learn more about, do we do that? Is that normal behavior? Yeah. Okay. And if they, and if they don't have an, and if they have a good web page, not an annoying web page, who, someone tell me what's an annoying web page that we leave right away. What's an, an annoying web page? Uh, to, go ahead, Alex. Sorry. Oh, just, uh, um, I think just, like the content is just, it kind of seems, seems pretty basic. Like it's not like it's something you can probably just copy and paste uh, mm -hmm. or just 
yeah and then and just like most of like affiliate links so it's just obviously there's kind of like an angle to why it's there it's just you know it's not really adding any value or it's not user friendly not user friendly it's not you're clicking on a link you ever click on a link you want to get the content that they were talking about and it takes you in a completely different place or it's mm -hmm. that endless scrolling and scrolling and they keep doing or the uh, the worst thing you want to lose me in five seconds you put pop-ups in your web page mm -hmm. or you better you don't tell me what the price is oh they don't tell you what the price is or you, you know developing it we're in a very competitive world and most people take the pro a good quality prospect for granted. How do we get that person to, to say, gee, um, I, I, I like this webpage. I like the content. I like the value they're giving me. How do you develop, you know, uh, through, through social media? How do you develop a relationship to get to that? My goal is to always get to the rule of five. Who heard Brandon on Monday? Rule of five. Most important thing, can we talk to people? Can we talk to people every day and get into that good conversation, that persuasive conversation? This is the way you do it. But, so when they go to my webpage, I offer them free content. I offer free consultation. I have a uh, most important thing. I have a built-in calendar on my webpage. So anybody who wants, uh, wants to get it, uh, wants to, wants to do a consultation or something, they can schedule with me. What happens when someone schedules a consultation uh, consultation with you, uh, um, Jessica? They've, they sched you. they've scheduled with you. Well, they, they want you. They want you. Oh, Jessica, thank you so much. I just have a few questions. Boom. Is that a, if you qualify me properly, you put me into the gut system. You set an agenda, you qualify me, you find out I have a need, the need is urgent, I have the money to, uh, to, pay, to pay for the need, or I have control of the property. Is that the, is that the best scenario conversation you're going to have that day? Yes. Because the opportunity lies there to close them. Yeah. Okay. And I just understand that about myself. You give me two, three good conversations every day. The math is in my favor. If you tell me I've got to do a lot of fruitless marketing and get the same and get the, you know, the the uncomfortable conversations or no conversations and a lot of voicemail, that I don't I, I know that about myself. I, I I find that I'm not enthusiastic about doing that every day. Does anyone else feel that way? Yep. Yep. Yeah. But you give me two, three good conversations and I make an offer. I even tell them, by the way, that's that's something new in the agenda, by the way. When you're setting the agenda, tell them you'd like to make them an offer today. Do you think they ever hear that? No. Yeah. Hey, Randy, I'm so glad we're talking today. Do you mind if I ask you two, three quick questions? You asked me a few and I'll tell you what, I'd like to make you an offer uh, uh, on that new carpeting. And if we can do business, great. If not, tell me to get lost. Is that fair? Yeah, that sounds fair. Oh, you're a good man. Thank you. Boom. How many times, did, how many prospects does he hear or salespeople where they say they're going to make him an offer today? Do we ever hear that? Not usually. Do you think that's a good persuasive technique? What, what's going through their mind when the prospect says, I'm going to make you an offer today? Doesn't mean you can accept, doesn't mean it's going to be the offer you like, or, but at least they know they got a pro real prospect on the phone, right? Yeah, at least yeah. you're not wasting my time. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think many salespeople or people in our line of business do stuff like that. So I think it's real important. We only got a, about two minutes left. Questions, role plays. Did I answer your question about marketing, Tim? I kind of yeah. okay. It's con yeah, it's putting out compelling, attractive, contemporary content that adds value to the prospect, so that they initiate a contact with you. Either a, a macro content, an email, or they read or they schedule with you, or an actual micro content where they pick up the phone. Ring ring, that's what you really love, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you guys know what do I do at the end of every one of my videos? Hi, I answer my own phone. Call me 970-281-5151.
Some people call me up first thing they say, oh, you really did answer your own phone. Boom, I'm talking to a prospect. How hard is that? In a today? warm one. Yes. How hard is that today, Randy, to get somebody to call you in this world where people are just inundated with marketing all day long? Okay. It's getting more and more difficult every day. You're right. Go ahead, Jess. So you think it is appropriate and good to sort of cut to the chase and get right into the money because really the without the money you, you you're dead in the water right so yeah yeah Jessica you know I'm I'll be glad to answer all your questions about the property um and on this particular one and it is with owner financing and they want fifty thousand dollars down which is a lot of money I don't if, if, uh, that that wouldn't be comfortable for your budget today if you found this was the appropriate property would it I mean, that's just so perfect because it's exactly the amount of money I have. Wow. All in my pocket. But you don't want to spend all the money you have, though, right? I mean, oh, oh yeah, I do. I totally oh. do on this property. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. How, this how is what I want. Have, I want that house. <laughs> how many people here have given million dollar presentations? And then at the end, the prospect said, Claude, if I had the money, I'd do this deal. <laughs> Am mm -hmm. I the only one? <laughs> so, yeah. Dive right into it and. Don't be shy about it. Talk yeah. about it. I think, we, I think we I can think so be very too. honest. I, I know I talk about man, positive manipulation and persuasion <laughs> techniques and everything, but I also believe we can have very honest dialogues with people. Yes. And I'd rather get a quick no than a reluctant maybe. Oh, well, let's, you know, um, mm -hmm. Alex, this sounds really good. And uh, I'm going to talk to my chihuahuas about it. And uh, I'm going to get back to you in the near distant future, man. You're a great guy. Thanks for thanks for the free latte and uh, two hours of information. You're a great guy. That oh, was my, my gun. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Is that yeah, what yeah. We, is that what we want all day long? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny because, Claude, you brought up the, the Girl Scouts with your daughter. Yeah. And the fact that she sold all those cookies. Yeah. Uh, my son did a similar thing with the, with the Boy Scout popcorn. My son, too. Same thing. Yeah. Hey, my son got a scholarship yeah. from the Boy Scouts, too. Because uh, that means he got over $2,500 in sales. And he got yeah. the 3%. Yeah. And well, my son had this thing. Is We figured it out over time, and I wish we'd known some of the lessons early. But... We had a system, 25 no's, day was over, because okay. that was the frustration level. But we also had another thing with it saying every no was one step closer to a yes. Good attitude. And I remember one day we were, he was absolutely, we did the 25th no, but we only had one house left in the subdivision. I said, well, do you really want to come back? Or do you want to try it? Because they're sitting right there. He says, well, let me try it. And it was a $60 sale for him, one of the big sales for him. And the guy says, come back tomorrow because my cousins are coming over and they want this, this, and this. So we made sure that we brought that, that and that with us. And it wound up turning into another $100 sale the very next day to start off with. Yeah. What's the difference between a successful story like that, your son, and, and, and the other kids who just, they called up grandma and that's, that was the end of it, you mm -hmm. know? And but he was getting, but he was going door to door knocking. But he also learned to take, you know, those little red wagons, those plastic ones. Yep. He would put, he would put in the assortment of the product there, and they're like, "Oh, I have to," you know. The, the, this is always when they, they would start with the excuses. Um. Oh, well, I have to order it, and it'll, you'll have to deliver it later. No, man, it's right here. See, take a look. And they, then all of a sudden, it's that visual right there. And then it was the. Well, I don't have cash. He says, well, we also take check and credit card. And as soon as he got the credit card and he showed the cell phone that we could do it on the credit card, he closed 30% more sales Yeah, because of that one little step. I think the key to success is just talking to people, mm -hmm. taking, taking positive action. Mike, you know, talking about my, my daughter used to go out with her, in her uniform mm -hmm. with her with her little red wagon and she gave away and she had a sample tray. And she, mm, oh, okay. Uh, okay. How do you say no to that? How do you, <laughs> okay. When I, when I go to the, when I'm back in San Diego, it's girls, uh, the, the little daisies or girls yep. there. 
I, you know what? I can't say no to a cute Girl Scout. They're too cute. <laughs> I can't say no. Here, you, you give them that five, 10, 20 bucks and you get the big smile on their face and everything. Like, How do you say no? Is that an emotional sale? You better believe it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. It's like uh, I went looking through the cabinets uh, yesterday or no, not yesterday, about, about the weekend because I was looking for the peanut butter cookies, right? Ooh, and, thin and mint. I, I'm a thin mint guy. Well, I couldn't find them either. And so I'm sitting here. <laughs> my son had just been home, you know, for December, college. And I happened to be talking to him. And I said, by the way, what happened to all my peanut butter cookies? Giggle, giggle. <laughs> well, let's see. I had two boxes at Thanksgiving and three boxes. At, and I'm like, so that's what happened to my stuff. Well, uh, my, uh, my house, my kids are growing up now. My yep. house, my garage still smells like Thin Mints. Good smell. Okay, it's a it's a good smell. Before we go, good session, guys. Thank you. Um, just before we go, I wanted to share with you a podcast. A friend of mine shared it with me. It's fantastic. It's called Hidden Brain, and it's two parts about persuasion uh, with Robert Cialdini. Mm-hmm. And it is he gives examples of different types of persuasion techniques. Um, influencing people it, in terms of marketing and everything. This to me is the mountaintop. It's called Hidden Brain and it came out January 16th. It's part one and two. Definitely, it's fan- uh, I'm giving it a Claude five star rating. It's that good. Um, it'll be worth and this and it's free. This is, be- this is better stuff than you would get in a college course. You know, that's the thing about some really good quality information out there. You learn persuasion, you learn the right words, you do the right kind of attraction marketing to people, and you can make as much money as you want. That that's that to me, that's the missing link from most businesses. Making that connect. There's someone today who has a problem, who has a need, they they're ready to spend, but are you making that connect? Are you putting out that marketing so they can discover you and you can have that good conversation. We got to stop become, we got to stop remaining a secret in the marketplace, invest 30 minutes a day, putting out content and what, and you'll get that sale. Absolutely. Thank you everybody for attending. Great session today. Thank you. Good role play.